When we say the phrase, dangerous animal, some of you might think of a ferocious pride of lions, the eerie eyes of a shark or even the massive jaws of a crocodile. Luckily for most of us, these aren't the kind of creatures that we encounter in our everyday lives. We are often safely separated from them by distance and fences. But over 66 million years ago, dinosaurs and prehistoric animals were free to roam the earth and do as they pleased. From club-tailed herbivores to carnivores with 8-inch teeth, these are just five of the most ferocious and dangerous dinosaurs to have ever lived. While it was a herbivore, Ankylosaurus is not to be taken lightly. National Geographic has described this formidable creature as the armored tank of dinosaurs. And with good reason. The broad, robust body of the Ankylosaurus was covered with armored plates and strips of spikes. It had short, squat legs, a flat head, and a dangerous weapon for a tail. In 1906, an expedition led by Barnum Brown discovered the creature in the Hell Creek Formation near Gilbert Creek, Montana. It was described for the first time two years later, and its name, Ankylosaurus, means fused lizard, for the makeup of the armor on its body and its remarkable tail, which we'll get to soon. It is believed the Ankylosaurus was between 20 and 26 feet long, and weighed somewhere between 4 and 8 tons. As a result, it is the largest known Ankylosaurid. The oversized scales on the creature's body were not just that, but in fact had complex microstructures of bone and collagen, akin to the modern materials of Kevlar and fiberglass. It was thought to be lightweight but extremely durable, resistant to breakage or penetration by the teeth of predators. It also had a wide, low skull, with plates that protected its eyes and four horns, two on the back of its head pointing backwards, and two below pointing forwards. The bony knobs and spikes were thought to be bones that formed within the skin, like that of modern crocodiles or armadillos. Their only weak spot was their bellies. That wasn't the only thing making the Ankylosaurus a tough creature to prey upon. However, it also had a club-like tail. The tendons in the tail were not very elastic, allowing great force to be transmitted to it. The club on the end was capable of smashing bones, including the foot bones of predators. Interestingly, the earliest known ankylosaurs, called nodosaurs, had no tail club and had different armor patterns. It's unknown even today what exactly the clubs were used for, whether it was for defense against predators, for fighting amongst the species over territories or resources, or to impress the opposite sex. It seems reasonable to think that it was perhaps for defense against predators, considering that although Ankylosaurus lived among easygoing herbivores like Triceratops and the duck-billed dinosaur Edmontosaurus, it also had to deal with the illustrious T-Rex. Together, they inhabited a warm, subtropical, monsoonal climate during the late Cretaceous period, receiving only occasional rainfall on top of tropical storms and forest fires. The wide muzzle of the Ankylosaurus was designed for low browse cropping. It likely ate 130 pounds of ferns a day and also consumed fruit. Its narrow beak helped strip leaves from plants and it had small, leaf-shaped teeth. It probably didn't chew its food, as it had a digestive system designed to break down unchewed plants. Our knowledge of Ankylosaurus is constantly changing. Each time a new fossil is discovered, a new feature of the dinosaur is found with it. In 2017, for example, it was discovered that its nostrils were on the side of its head, not the front of its snout. A year earlier, a new species of the creature was found. It was named Zool crurivastator, the former of which is a nod to the creature Zool in the 1984 movie Ghostbusters, while the latter is Latin and means destroyer of shins in reference to its whopping 10-foot-long clubbed tail. Like the Ankylosaurus, it was a herbivore, 
that doesn't make it any less intimidating or dangerous. The name Deinonychus probably doesn't ring a bell to most of you, but you're likely very familiar with its relative, the Velociraptor. Both are a part of the raptor family, or to use its scientific name, the Dromaeosauridae family. Deinonychus is the bigger cousin of the famed Velociraptor, growing to around 11 feet long and weighing in anywhere between 160 and 220 pounds, and its name translates as Terrible Claw, as at the time of its discovery, it was the raptor with the biggest sickle claw. Deinonychus was first discovered in Montana in 1931, near the town of Billings, but fossils have since been found in Utah, Wyoming, and Oklahoma. In the 1960s, a study of the creature ignited the debate about whether dinosaurs were warm or cold-blooded. Up until this time, dinosaurs were thought to have been giant lizards. But the raptor's discovery changed everything. It is also the creature which led to the theory that birds and dinosaurs were related, and is thought to have been covered in feathers when it was alive. Deinonychus lived in the early Cretaceous period, inhabiting floodplains or swamp-like habitats in western North America. A known carnivore, there is much debate about its hunting and social habits. Being a raptor, it of course has a prominent sickle claw on the second toe of each hind foot, which is thought to have been between 5 and 7 inches in length. It also boasted powerful jaws containing curved, blade-like teeth, and its snout is described as narrow. Its large hands had three claws each. It is widely believed although cannot be conclusively proven, that Deinonychus hunted Tenontosaurus, a medium to large-sized herbivore whose remains were found alongside its own in several quarries. It is speculated that the carnivore lived and hunted in packs, as one Deinonychus alone would not be capable of taking down a creature such as the Tenontosaurus, which was considerably larger than the raptor, as it was around twice its length and weighed between one and two tons. For a time, there was a theory that Deinonychus fed like the modern-day Komodo dragon, where the largest creature eats first, and will attack smaller ones if they attempt to feed. If the smaller reptiles are killed, they are cannibalized. However, a more recent study which looked at the track of the raptors suggested that they did partake in pack hunting. Then, in 2011, another debate arose when it was suggested that Deinonychus killed like birds of prey. It leapt onto its victim, pinning it beneath its body weight and gripping it with its sickle claws, feeding on the creature until it died of blood loss or organ failure. This theory came as the result of a study of the Deinonychus sickle claw. The exact use of it is not conclusively known. Some experts have suggested that it kicked with the claw to cut and slash prey, and that it was possibly even used to disembowel its victims but a 2009 study suggested that the huge claws were used for climbing. Interestingly, Deinonychus eggs were the first raptor eggs to ever be discovered. The study of them led to the belief that the creature brooded them, using its own body heat for incubation. A recent paper in 2015 also theorized that the offspring were capable of some sort of flight in their youth, due to the open and mobile nature of their shoulder joints. Deinonychus is actually the basis for the Velociraptor in Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park books and the subsequent films. Crichton reportedly changed the name to Velociraptor because it sounded more dramatic, and the movies followed suit. In real life, Velociraptors are thought to have been roughly the size of a turkey. Deinonychus is a much more suitable creature for this series, as it is much bigger and a more intimidating threat. The Moposaurus was first excavated between 1997 and 2001 by the Argentinian-Canadian Dinosaur Project. It was located in northern Patagonia, Argentina, and was described and named by paleontologist Rodolfo Coria and Phil Curry in 2006. The creature is known to have lived during the late Cretaceous period, calling Argentina and possibly Chile its home 
and its name is derived from the Mapuche word Mapu, meaning of the land or of the earth, and of course the Greek Saurus meaning lizard. The creature's remains were found in a bone bed containing several different Mapusauruses, all at different growth stages. The bone bed is believed to have once been what is called a predator trap, which is a natural hazard which prey fall into, in turn attracting predators who also then got stuck and suffered the same fate. The multitude of skeletons in the bone bed is possibly an indication that the creatures pack hunted to take down large prey, as proposed by Rodolfo Coria, as the Mapasaurus is thought to have preyed upon Argentinosaurus, a massive 120 foot long herbivore whom we covered in the five biggest dinosaurs to have walked the earth episode. If Mapasaurus pack hunted in this manner, it would be the first substantive evidence of such behavior by large theropods, other than the Tyrannosaurus. While it's possible that the bones were washed downstream by a river, it seems highly unlikely given that the only bones are that of the Mapasaurus. Similar in size to its close relative, Gigantosaurus, Mapasaurus was between 38 and 41 feet in length, and weighed between 3 and 5 tons. Its skull contained only 12 teeth instead of 14 like its cousin, however, as its skull was shorter in length. The creature lived in a dry, hot environment, with seasonal and short-lasting streams. Although it has been speculated that it hunted Argentinosaurus, its diet outside of that is unknown. It's likely that even in a pack, Mapasaurus probably only targeted sick, old, or juvenile Argentinosaurus, taking huge bites that would weaken the prey, and lead to blood loss or infection. Its teeth were flat and curved with serrated edges, making it perfect for cutting into flesh. To experts, this is another indication that the creature targeted Argentinosaurus, whose bones were too big to cut through. Although Mapasaurus is considered to be around the same size or bigger than a T-Rex, that isn't the only comparison to be made. Mapasaurus was faster and more agile, but had a less powerful jaw. Its teeth were designed to cut into flesh, while Tyrannosaurus teeth are conical and smooth, designed for cutting through bone. Both have their own advantages and weaknesses, but they are just as deadly as one another. Carcrodontosaurus, whose name means the shark tooth lizard, is another lesser known carnivore who gave the T-Rex a run for its money. The huge creature was around 39 to 44 feet in length and weighed anywhere between 6 and 16 tons. Its skull alone was roughly the length of a person at around 5 feet. But that wasn't the only thing that made it so fearsome. Carcharodontosaurus was named so after its 8 inch long serrated teeth, which were capable of slicing through flesh like it was butter. As a result, its prey would be incapacitated, disoriented from its wounds, and they often died from blood loss. In 1924, two teeth belonging to the Carcharodontosaurus were located in Algeria. Some years later, a paleontologist described the remains he found in Egypt which had been originally excavated in 1914. However, the described fossils were ultimately destroyed in 1944 during World War II. It wasn't until five decades later, in 1995, that another complete skull was found in Morocco. Because of this, much of the details surrounding the creature are based on pure speculation. The loss of the initial skeleton is thought to have been a contributing factor as to why Carcharodontosaurus is not as well known as the T-Rex, despite being equally daunting. What we know for certain, however, is that Carcharodontosaurus was not a creature to be messed with. Rivaling both T-Rex and Spinosaurus in size, it had powerful legs that made it capable of outrunning the former, if not both. Studies of its skull led experts to suggest that it could lift creatures weighing as much as 935 pounds in its jaws, and is thought to be another dinosaur that participated in pack hunting, although this cannot be confirmed with the evidence that is currently available. 
Carcharodontosaurus lived in northern Africa in the mid-Cretaceous period, sharing its territory with the formidable Spinosaurus. In fact, it has been postulated that the adult Carcharodontosaurus preyed on the young and vulnerable, or old and sick Spinosauri. It is known to have extremely good eyesight due to its large optic nerve, and relied heavily on its sight while hunting. It's thought this creature also scavenged. One of the most notable things about the Carcharodontosaurus is that its brain layout was different from that of birds, leading to the conclusion that it was not a part of the evolutionary trend in dinosaurs. Carcharodontosaurus is one of many theropods whose body grew bigger while its brain stayed the same size, halting further biological development. This has led experts to wonder if this was the reason they disappeared before the end of the Cretaceous period. Probably the name on the list that you are most familiar with. The Allosaurus was one of the most imposing carnivores of the late Jurassic period. Its bones were largely located in North America's Morrison Formation, which runs from Montana to Mexico, although a few fossils were later found in Portugal. Its name translates as different lizard for its unique concave vertebrae. In 1991, near Shell, Wyoming, a Swiss team led by Kirby Cyber unearthed one of the best preserved fossils ever found. The skeleton was 95% complete and was later named Big Al. The creature is known to have died young and was only 87% fully grown at the time of its death. It was riddled with bone breakage and infection, including damage to its ribs, toes, and vertebrae and it was uncovered that Big Al had suffered from a bone infection that could have led to necrosis. In the years following Big Al's discovery, a second, even more complete Allosaurus skeleton was located. It was named Big Al II. Allosaurus is estimated to have been between 32 and 39 feet in length, weighing over 1 to 2 tons, with a top speed of 21 miles per hour. Its huge skull was balanced by its thick, heavy tail, but contained a brain the size of a loaf of bread. Its intelligence is equated to that of a modern-day ostrich. While it may not be that clever of a creature, Allosaurus was certainly a merciless predator. It had poor hearing, capable of detecting only low-frequency sounds. But its backwards-facing teeth meant that with each struggle, its prey would be pushed further and further down its throat. It also had a keen sense of smell, and its four-inch knife-like teeth would shed and regrow over its lifetime. When it lived in the Morrison Formation, Allosaurus was at the top of the food chain, preying on Diplodocus and Stegosaurus, and likely hunting juveniles. It's unlikely that it was a threat to full-grown sauropods, unless it hunted in packs but it is thought to have been a solitary hunter that held larger territories, like a tiger, and that Allosaurus was generally aggressive with one another. Not much is known about its methods of hunting, but it's thought to have used its arms to grip its prey and strike at its throat, or alternatively, as it could open its jaws wide, it perhaps used its teeth as a rasp to strip off the flesh, causing the prey to bleed out. Neither one of these methods sounds particularly appealing, and just add to the reasons why the Allosaurus was one of the most feared carnivores of all time. Thank you for watching Dinosaur Discovery, and we will be back here next week looking at the wonderful world of our prehistoric past.